Hi everyone, welcome to a short session today on how to set up triggers on your Simeon uh, Pro automation system. It's not terribly difficult, but it can be a little confusing. So let me tell you in the very beginning, there's one thing you need to know. Most uh, of you people may be using a switcher, a broadcast tool switcher, the ACS 8.2 Plus or similar. In the case of the 8.2 Plus and the uh, SS 8.2, uh, before you put it into the rack, if you're going to operate it like we're operating in this particular case, you need to open up the top and take that uh, dip switch. There's a, a bunch of dip switches there, and they're labeled SW17. Dip switch number five must be in the on position. Uh, if it's in the off position, it will do a stereo overlap, but it requires more keystrokes in order to do it. In this particular application we have here, it's a talk station. We don't really need any overlap, so we don't want that on. It's much easier if you turn it uh, must must be on. So take dip switch SW17, open up the top, and there's a little blue dip switch, a bunch of dip switches together, and make sure that number five is turned on. If you get it all wired up and then you find out that you got to take it back out of the rack to do this, it's a little little difficult. So I thought I'd better let you know how to do that first. Now, I'm being living a, a little bit dangerously here. Um, mainly because we're operating on a log that is currently on the air. So uh, please bear with me here, and I will try not to mess the radio station up. This happens to be a Christian radio station in Colorado Springs, KFCS, and it's currently broadcasting. Now, when a station is broadcasting and you want to uh, get into your tools up here, uh, they will be uh, grayed out. And in this particular case... Uh, we got it. We're going to have to get in there to, to operate on it. And so take your little arrow here, put it up. If you see me moving the arrow around, put it up in this area up here and then hit, uh, and I'm using an Apple computer, but hit control and the, uh, parentheses. I'm sorry, the quote, uh, the control and the quotation mark when, control and quotation marks simultaneously. When you do that, that will make give you the ability to be able to get into it. Now you'll notice over here that it says that hardware and serial ports. These are very important items in order to set this thing up. Uh, and it, you notice here that it's set on COM port number five. Well, unless you do the following, you won't have a clue as to where how this is going to work. So I'm going to take you back out of here for just a second, and we're going to figure out how we know where, where, uh, where, how the switcher is connected to the computer. So what you want to do here is go and find your control panel, and then go to the control panel and find uh, uh, devices and printers. Device manager is probably the best place to go. And in device manager, when you bring that up, you'll see this, and then go to ports, COM ports and L, uh, PT ports. When you click on there, that's what I hate about show and tell. Sometimes it doesn't show you what you want to tell. Uh, when you pick, click on here, such as I did, it says uh, USB to serial COM port is COM port number five. Because what happened is we have this all plugged together. It's all plugged in and the computer determined it's going to use COM port number five for this USB to serial cable. Now the US, when you want to use this uh, unit, the switcher, Broadcast Tools, ACS 8.2 Plus, you need to purchase an additional little USB to serial in order to connect it. Otherwise, uh, there, most of these computers don't have a serial port as an input. So uh, you have to, you'll see that that's on, on number five. So now we're going to go back into the in, into here, and you'll notice that um, when I go, I'm going to bring this back up. And in order to do so, I'm going to hit Control and the quotation marks. It's going to put me back in here, and I'm going to go to the serial, and I'm going to set this to COM port 5, because that's where it told me to put it. 
These other numbers should always be here, 9,600, none, eight, and one. Uh, also, generally, this thing over here, the uh, uh, row, row control, flow control, is usually set to hardware, and you want that to be set to none. Otherwise, it won't work. Carriage return line feed here, carriage return line feed here. These will be the same, and that will permit it to work. Next, after you do that, you need to go back into hardware again, so I'm going to hit Control and the uh, quotation marks, and that's going to put us up there. And we're going to go to the serial COM port, which we see everything's right there. Let's go over to the hardware. In the hardware, you need to there's a drop-down menu here, and it's going to tell you all the different devices I have available. We're using ACS 8.2, so you need to select that to be in here, ACS 8.2. Outgoing relays, ACS as well, 8.2. Select that from the drop-down menu. Click OK, and that's going to make all that work. Oh, there was one other thing I wanted to uh, point out to you when you get in there. So we're going to go back to the quotation marks, and I, when, when we go to hardware, uh, we want in this hardware where we turn these things on, we want to also click on this little guy down here that says generate incoming trigger log. And what that will do is it will make a log. It will tell you when you actually receive triggers, So that's very helpful in case you're going to have any issues with it and you, you want to see what's actually going on. Uh, while we're here, I can show you where that incoming trigger log is. The incoming trigger log is if you go to the uh, BSI, uh, and we're going to, never fails. When I try to find something in a hurry, I can't actually get there as quickly as I'd like to, BSI 32. And uh, down here it says B, uh, trigger log. So you're in the uh, BSI. 32 uh, and just scroll down here to where it says trigger log and when you click the trigger log on it's going to tell you each day uh, the triggers were fired in this particular case we're going to go to uh, let's see we're going to go to um, hmm, move further down sorry about this but we're going to move down to uh, to that was 1230 2016 let's go up here to, uh, well, this any one of these will work just fine. And if you click on here, you'll see that on January the 9th of 2017, it fired uh, trigger number one over here, trigger number one at 312, 323. Now, these happen to be all floating breaks in a program, Gordon Deal's uh, America's First News. So in case there was a doubt as to whether we actually received those triggers from the satellite receiver, right there they are. So that ought to give you a pretty good idea as to how to be able to find those. It's the easiest thing in the world to do as long as you know how to get to them. But if you don't know how to get to them, well, then you get, have a, a little bit of a problem. Now we're going to go back into Simeon one more time, and we're going to take a look at the, go up here to Async, and we're going to go to Triggers. So, and we're going to edit trigger sets. So here we are in the trigger sets. Now I only have one trigger set here and because I only need, really need one trigger because all I care about is this one trigger. When it fires, I want it to advance the log. In doing so, what happens is we put, we, we open up the, uh, we open up the uh, event builder and we go to macros up here at the top. And then we go down to uh, start next, PQRS. These are all in alphabetical order over here. And we will select start next, H-I-J-K-L-M-N-O-P-Q-R-S. And when you come to PQRS, uh, see how long it takes you to get to it when you're trying to get to it. PQRS. So start next. That's right here. So you take this. Just drag it over, like we did here, and it, and it will say start next. Put that in there, and then save it. Now, I've saved this as GD for Gordon Deal. So you go up here, File, and Save As, 
and I want to save it as GD. I, I put that in there, GD for Gordon Deal. That's the name of the program in the morning. And so that trigger set is going to be saved as GD. Now we have that done. The next thing we would have to do in the log, and this is the way I prefer to do it. I go into my event builder, and I, in order to set this up, I take it, build a cart, and in that cart, I'm going to put a macro, and the macro is going to say uh, serial uh, triggers, PQRS, PQRT, triggers, um, and when we get to the triggers, This is going to be triggers. Sorry about that. So one of the things that wants to go in here is that we want to turn the trigger on. So we're going to say trigger space O N. That wants to, to go into the cart because that's going to be an important item. So we're going to stick him in there. Drag him over and put him in there. And then we're going to go to load triggers. And um, that's under the L's, I, J, K, L, load triggers. And in this particular, the name of the trigger set, as I said, was GD. So we're going to put GD, load triggers GD. So we want that to happen first. So we want to load triggers GD. I'm going to switch these around so it says macro load triggers GD. And then we're going to turn those triggers on. So I need to do put a auto start in there to turn those triggers on and that's all there is to it so what's going to happen here is whenever we schedule this in our log uh, trigger GD it will on that log it will turn those triggers on it will schedule those triggers and then it will turn the triggers on and then you save this now I always save everything and the, the BSI guys recommend that you save everything like this in uh, all your carts should be saved in uh, a special program. Not uh, so I have a, one that I this particular one's called utility. So I save of all my carts in the utility file, uh, not in any of the files that have audio files in them. So you want to save it in a separate spot just like that. So the next thing I do is. Uh, when I schedule them, rather than a lot of people want to schedule them in this in the uh, scheduler, I don't do that. I schedule them. I'm going to go back here in this log to this morning, and here we are in the uh, 4 a.m. hour, and you'll notice in the 4 a.m. hour, uh, we're going to start go back to uh, right at the top of the hour, and it says here triggers GD. So what happens here is I scheduled that to come on at 4.05 as soon as that hour starts. And I'll, you'll see that, that right there is load triggers, GD, turn the triggers on. So it's going to be in the log, and it's going to turn those guys on at exactly 4.06. Now, I also turn them off. I have another little macro that I put into a cart, and I turn them off at 4.29. Because they send a trigger at 429.50 to start the break, but I prefer to start the break because it is a fixed break. I prefer to start it with an at sign, so I let the program start it at 29.50 and not the trigger. If I had left the trigger on, it might want to try to do it twice, and then we'd really be out of whack. So I turn the triggers off at 429, 429.50. You can see here it's going to fire automatically. Then in this in this log, I will go ahead and turn the triggers back on when we start the next stop set. So at uh, 4:34, when we come back, right at 4:34, I turn the triggers back. I turn the triggers back on again and make sure it's GD. So, but I use the same cart. Uh, I be just so it makes sure instead of turning the triggers off and turning them on. I say load triggers GD and turn the triggers on. So we're sure that we're going to get the right triggers on and they're going to start back up again. And the next thing I do, most obviously, when you get to the end of this thing, at the end of the log, at the top of the hour, I turn the triggers off and I do the same thing at the top of the hour. I turn my triggers off 
at, uh, uh, at 50, uh, 458. Even though the brakes at 458.50, I turn them off a little bit before the break because they're going to want to fire a trigger there again, and that might want to interfere with my, my at sign or by the log executing that trigger. So it's best to turn those triggers off up there. The other thing I would like to point out to you, and I can't show you this here, but I will tell you about the uh, broadcast tool switcher, the ACS 8.2, just to sort of help you along. The, the instruction book is fairly clear if you understand what they're saying, but it took some of the people I've been talking with a little bit of time to figure it out. The connector where the triggers are located is on the back of the switcher, on the left side, on the bottom. The, and there's a big 16 uh, connector, 16 screw uh, connector, and it's the bottom one. There are four of them located there, and it's the bottom one. And the uh, PIPs, or the triggers, one, two, three, four, and five, and I only was using one here, uh, are located on that bottom row. Number one is trigger one. Uh, number three is trigger two. Number four is tr trigger three. Number six is trigger four. And number seven is trigger five. I know it sounds a little confusing, but the odd numbers of two, five, and eight are all are the grounds. So in order to make this work, you'll hook your trigger up. In my case, trigger one went from uh, your your high side goes on one, and your ground side goes on three on, uh, uh, on a number three on the bottom row, and that will cause that trigger to close. So again, uh, triggers one, two, three, four, and five, and if you look at the bottom connector on the back of the switcher. Number one is trigger one. Number two is ground. Number three is uh, uh, trigger two. Number four is trigger three. Number five is ground. Uh, number six is trigger number four. And uh, number eight is ground. So I know it's a little bit confusing. If you have a question, please feel free to give me a call or send me an email and I'll help you through it. So that's kind of how we set up these triggers and how you can see how the triggers work. And these are generally used for floating brakes. Uh, I have another uh, little session about this uh, coming up that's a little bit more in depth and maybe a little bit, maybe it will help clarify what I just said. If I'm, I apologize if I sound a little confusing here, but uh, I hope this will give you a hand. Thanks and keep watching.